Hello. Welcome to Sir Hans's reading room. And this is... Well, this is gonna be a, a Theon chapter one. When's winter breakdown? Um, please slap a like on this. If you're on my patron, thank you for your support. You're viewing this early. Weeks early, uh, potentially. Um, if not, and you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Uh, if you could, please subscribe if you already haven't done so. And also, consider check, uh, checking out my other content as well. But also, please slap a like on this video. Like goal is gonna be 420. <laughs> Get it? Weed? Get it? Alright, let's begin. Theon Greyjoy. Now this is, uh, I don't even know if I explained this in the, uh, <laughs> I'm making a video. I don't even know if I explained this in the intro, but this is a Winds of Winter Theon sample chapter breakdown. So when this chapter actually comes out, when Winds of Winter comes out, rather, right, could look totally different. But as of right now, Theon Greyjoy is in Stannis Baratheon's captivity, right? And uh, also, one more thing I forgot to say, right, is you can get these on... Uh, well, I I've, I've found them. I think it's the only official... Well, it's unofficial, because once again, George released these as excerpts. Uh, he does reading, he did readings at, like, Comic-Con-type events, and then, like, uh, maybe book signings and stuff, right? So there's a compilation of different ones, and I've already broke down the Victorian ones, linked down below, but like I said, these are really rough drafts, uh, so... Uh, I'll put the link where I got them from, but it's really easy. Just go to Google and type in Winds of Winter Sample Chapters, and this GitHub link uh, pops up. So yeah, Theon. Uh, let's do this. The king's voice was choked with anger. You're a worse pirate than Salador San. Theon Greyjoy opened his eyes. Oh yeah, let me finish explaining. Uh, where the Theon is in... Um, at the end of A Dance of Dragons, he uh, helped the fake Arya escape Winterfell. Right? So just like in the TV show in season 5 or season 6... The end of season five, I think. He helped Sansa escape, right? So the TV show did something different where they put Sansa actually at Winterfell. In the books, it's fake Arya. It's supposed to be Arya, right? But the show didn't do that. They put Sansa, changed the plot up entirely. Sansa's uh, making her way out of the veil right now with Littlefinger. Um, so Jane Poole um, is pretending to be Arya. Right, and not only do people at Winterfell who used to a lot of them used to be allied with Rob Stark when he was the King of the North, um, not only do they not necessarily know what Arya looked like, but also she's just been married to Ramsay Bolton, right? So because word got out that Arya is at Winterfell, Jon Snow, who's in the North, right? He's at he's at the Wall at this time. He's Lord Commander. He finds out about it, and he thinks, oh, holy crap, I thought my sister was dead, right? Arya's his favorite sister, so Melisandre, who's currently at the wall, right, convinces him to allow her to send Mance Raider, who's still alive, uh, under the guise of, uh, of a bard, right? But he's pretending to be Lord of Bones to everybody at Winterfell, aside from Melisandre and now Jon Snow, um, in A Dance of Dragons, Melisandre reveals to Jon Snow that the Lord of Bones is actually Mance Raider. And it's really interesting because the Lord of Bones just beat the shit out of Jon Snow in a fight. They were like, uh, you know, training out in the yard. And Jon was like, I can't believe how strong Lord of Bones is. Because the last time Jon saw Lord of Bones was when he was a wildling. He was pretending to be a wildling. And he was one of the wildlings that Jon Snow didn't get along with. Right? Um, so, you know, uh, John having dealt with him before and then having dealt with him again when he's a captive at the wall, right? After the, uh, you know, attack on the wall goes through, Stannis comes in and saves everybody, right? Um, you know, 
John encounters him again in the yard, and it's actually Mance Raider, and Mance has all this pent-up stress and shit, so he's really hammering John, and John can't believe, can't believe that, uh, you know, how strong Lord of Bones is, and it's because Lord of Bones is a lot smaller than Mance Raider. Mance Raider is long and spindly, right, and, uh, He's a good fighter because of that. He's got long arms, long legs, and uh, he's pretty formidable. Lord of Bones, on the other hand, is not. Not so much, right? Um, <clears throat> so John was being glamoured while they're fighting. But anyway, Melisandre convinces John to dispatch uh, Mance Raider. It, the only reason why she reveals that it's not the Lord of Bones to John is because John doesn't trust the Lord of Bones. Melisandre thinks, well, he'll probably trust Mance Raider. Because right when Melisandre... And Stannis show up. John is actually treating with Mance Raider to try to work out a deal. Remember, uh, the wall was being attacked by the Wildlings. Really, the Wildlings didn't want to do it. They just wanted to go through and go south. But the Wildlings don't exactly have the best track record of not stealing, well, everything from the people that are south of the wall. Like, like they'll come and steal, uh, you know, women and children and p earthly possessions like gold and like really they come down looking for good weapons right because they can't make good steel uh, north of the wall which is really interesting that that's something that hasn't been learned or trade like there's actually instances of people at the night's watch that have traded with the wildlings before like there's this one maester who goes and stays at east watch and has all these different encounters and adventures with uh wildlings while he's at the wall right and he records all this information puts it down and sends it to the citadel right which is like the maester's headquarter and then uh one of his last known adventures is he goes back like after having all of this crazy adventure where he almost dies and stuff makes it back to the citadel writes it all down he ends up going back to the wall <laughs> so it's a really interesting place but you know we had this long history of the wildlings treating with the night's watch and like people north of the wall south of the wall and all this stuff it's just interesting that the you know Wildlings never learn how to uh, fully, you know, make make good steel and stuff. They can make, like, pig iron and, and, and stuff. They can't make, like, full-on suits of armor. I think the big thing is, 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 like, you know, the wildlings may come down south and steal those things, right? So when they do, when the wildlings successfully come down and steal good swords and good, uh, you know, uh, steel, right? I would say helmets probably, like, you know, boots... Um, anything that would protect them in a fight against another wildling, right, and they go back north of the wall, they're kind of revered because, like, not every single wildling who would potentially fight uh, uh, the wildling who went south of the wall would be able to beat them because they got shitty steel. Or, for instance, fire-hardened sticks. So that's not necessarily... It's it's pretty sturdy. It's a good spear, but it's not going to help you if you have good solid castle forged steel, right? So the Seven Kingdoms are always worn. But I was going to say, I think the the need hasn't exactly arised because steel isn't so common up. So the Wildlings may be free folk, but they're also a little bit less developed in the sense that, like, you know, the reason why steel started becoming a thing is because everybody was, was using, uh, you know, iron... Uh, before that, but then they realized that, like, if we want to keep up with everybody and not die so quickly, we're going to need to make steel armor too, right? I think something, you know, you had the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. That's what I, that's what I got confused with. Everybody was using bronze weapons and stuff, right? And, uh, they, you know, eventually had to start using iron because that's a lot stronger. So anyway, that's probably just an idea of why the Wildlings haven't really done that. But getting way back on track here, John sends Mance Raider to go in, um, you know, try to rescue his sister, or someone who he thinks is his sister, which is actually Jane Poole, right? So let's continue. Let me start back over, right? The king's voice was choked with anger. You're a worse pirate than Salador Sand. Theon Greyjoy opened his eyes. His shoulders were on fire, and he could not move his hands. For half a heartbeat, he feared he was back in his old cell under the Dreadfort that the jumble of memories inside his head was no more than the residue of some fever dream. I was asleep, he realized, that or passed out from the pain. When he tried to move, he swung from side to side, his back scraping against stone. He was hanging from a wall inside a tower, his wrist chained to a pair of rusted iron rings. Also, he's a prisoner of Stannis, like I was just mentioning. So when he escapes... Right? It's, it's, uh, you know, Mance could potentially be dead in a cage right now because that's what's, what's included in the pink letter, which is something that sends John to try to go and 
take back Winterfell, he's ultimately killed because of that act. He's also killed because he lets a bunch of wildlings down south of the wall, and he does that a few times. He even lets those wildlings join the Night Watch, and the older dudes like Cotter Pike is like, hold the... F- We've been fight- we've been fighting wildlings. That's all we know how to do, and uh, it seems like he's kind of tolerant for a while. But then John just takes it too far, and literally, John does the ultimate thing, which means death. John literally does what happens at the start of the story, which is you know, remember Ned Stark beheads a deserter of the Night's Watch. Jon Snow deserts the Night's Watch, right? So that's why he's killed. So anyway, um. Mance Raider isn't uh, involved with the escape with Theon and the fake Arya, a.k.a. Jane Poole. It's the Spearwives that uh, Mance takes with him, right? So Lord of Bones, who's glamoured as Mance, but John and Melisandre know who know that it's actually Mance. Um, it, you know, they make the escape, and it's obvious that they, uh, if they hadn't escaped, they would have gotten caught. So, you know, those Spearwives were hanging out with you know, the bard the whole time. Maybe he could talk his way out. Maybe he's, like, maimed or something. The only reason why one would be concerned is because Mance is a pretty cool character, and he also might be secretly Jon Snow's father, Rhaegar, right? Um, I'm not going to talk about that now. That'll be too much of a tangent. The air reeked of burning peat, which is like a uh, um, it's peat moss, potentially. Um, I don't know per se. I think it is. But that is... It's good for... Uh, new plants that are emerging because I think it's got a lot of nitrogen in it. But ultimately, I've got some bags of soil right behind my camera that are peat-free. So uh, maybe peat doesn't smell too good when it burns. The floor was hard-packed dirt. Wooden steps spiraled up inside the walls to the roof. He saw no windows. The tower was dank, dark, and comfortless. It's only furnishings, a high-backed chair... And scar, if you want to read along, a scarred table resting on three trestles. No privy was in evidence. Can't take a shit in a way. Though Theon saw a chamber pot and one shadowed alcove. I should have waited. The only <laughs> light came from the candles on the table. His feet dangled six feet off the floor. My brother's debts, the king muttering. Joffrey's too. Though the baseborn abomination... I'm not going to do voices. I told myself I wasn't going to do voices. Just slight accents. Alter variations of my own accent. Abomination was no kin to me. Theon twisted in his chains. He knew that voice. Stannis. The... Damn, I just said I wasn't going to do voices. Theon Greyjoy chortled. A stab of pain went up his arm. From his shoulders to his wrists... All he had done, all he had suffered, Mo Kalen and Barleton and Winterfell, Abel and his washerwomen, Crowfood and his umbers, the trek through the snows, all of it only served to exchange one tormentor for another. Yo, Grace, <clears throat> a second voice uh, said softly. So Theon's last POV literally ends with him jumping off the battlements of Winterfell and landing in a large bank of snow. Right? That's how it ended with Sansa. In season five, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, damn, I need to go grab a water. Ha ha, who needs water when you can have Coca-Cola? All right. Um, your grace, a second voice said softly. Pardon, but your ink has frozen. The Bravosi, Theon knew. What's his name? Taicho, Taicho something. Perhaps a... A bit of heat. Uh, so Stannis, right, let me pause right there, is meeting with this dude, Tycho Nostaris, who is an Iron Banksman. This Iron Banksman had just met with Jon Snow. Jon Snow had just secured a bunch of loans to go and make greenhouses for Castle Black. So that's really awesome. But Jon's dead, lying in the ground. Because George hasn't written, or George has written probably most of Wind's Winter. He just hadn't put it out yet. Everybody keeps debating on whether it's coming, but I just remember not that long ago, all of his updates. One of the craziest ones was that he said, yeah, I have like 500 pages to go. Right right before that, he said, I'm three quarters of the way done. It's only got a quarter of the book left. It's coming. Anyway, um, Taicho, Taicho something, perhaps a a bit of heat. I know a quicker way. Stannis drew his dagger. For an instant, 
Theon thought that he meant to stab the banker. You will never get a drop of blood from that one, my lord, he might have told him. The king laid the blade of the knife against the ball of his left thumb and slashed. There, I will sign in mine own blood that ought to make your master's your master's happy. So I'm going to explain this as I remember it. The reason why the Iron Bank is even seeking Stannis, they went to the wall first, but Stannis wasn't there, uh, and they met with Jon Snow instead. The reason why Stannis is... Uh, or the Iron Bank is meeting with Stannis is because Cersei's not paying her fucking bills. Cersei's literally like, well, I don't need to... You know, to be fair, Cersei didn't rack up all the debts. Her house has been, you know, sort of making the debts lower because Robert Baratheon, as king, was borrowing money from the Lannisters. He was also borrowing from the Iron Bank, but when he died, the payments ceased because Cersei took over, you know. But really, Joffrey took over, then Tommen took over, you know. Uh, but Joffrey died, and then... Tom and his a little boy, but then Cersei got locked up. So it's kind of like, you know, they just couldn't pay their cell phone bill on time, right? But the Iron Bank, because Cersei, uh, the encounter that she has with, uh, I believe Cersei meets with Tycho. I think it's the Tycho or just maybe it's some Iron Banks, but she basically disrespects the hell out of him. She's like, we'll pay you guys when we pay you guys, when we have the money. So they're like, okay, well, we're going to seek out someone who's potentially the greatest contender and make sure they win the Iron Bank or win the Iron Throne, and then we'll get paid back, right? So the Iron Bank has just backed Stannis, and one of the things that Jon Snow thinks when Tycho Nistaris leaves him is that Stannis may have just won the Iron Throne because he has unlimited money to get the Iron Throne. The Iron Bank is going to make sure he gets the throne. If Stannis doesn't get it, whoever can amass Stannis' army will get it because they have the money to do it. But to be fair, the money thing... You can buy houses, you can buy loyalty of houses, but not as much that you would need to guarantee the Iron Throne. What you do is you buy cell swords. The problem with that is, there's always a problem with something in the Song of Ice and Fire, but the problem with the cell sword thing is that they they work for gold. And if someone could potentially pay them more, i.e. The, the Lannisters, they would switch switch sides. But here's the thing, the Iron Bank kind of ensures that that wouldn't happen because they have unlimited money they're like the they work in uh in unison in my opinion and i'm sure a lot of people think this with the faceless men right you gotta realize the iron bank itself was founded by ooh, <clears throat> i think we get this in a world of ice and fire and i could look it up because the book's right behind me but every time i take a book off that damn shelf it falls. Something falls. And I'm and I don't want that to happen on camera. So oh it's right there. You're like, yeah, it's the big one on the end. Yeah, but if I grab it and actually the window's small so you can't really see it that well. But if I grab it let me show you. If I grab it uh, the the my Funko pops up fall. You see? Wait, let me you see it right there? My Funko Pops will fall if I grab it. It's a heavy book, so when I move it, it's going to move the stuff around it. Sorry, y'all don't need to have a lesson in physics. Um, Alright, there we go. Uh, okay, so... Where was I talking about the story? So yeah, the Iron Bank works with the Faceless Men. The Faceless Men are known worldwide to give death. But here's the thing. There's another version of the Faceless Men in Karth. Okay? They're called the Crying Men or the Crying Assassins or something. Basically, they're, they're as good as the Faceless Men. But they, they, they always say, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right before they kill you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't I know. I mean, I know George has a wicked sense of humor. That's funny. It's like when you're, you got to realize, I said the crying thing, I messed up. People from Karth cry all the time, like on, on key because they uh, think that it shows emotion and it shows that they really mean that they are sorry that they have to do something that they don't want to do, right? So for instance, Danny has people cry all the time. When she's dealing with him in Karth, right? In the Feast for Crows. Uh, Zara Zone Doxus cries when he tells Danny she needs to leave because he won't let her impregnate him. I know, right? Like, come on. All you got to do is get pregnant. She did that with Cal Drogo. Zara Zone Doxus isn't Cal Drogo, right? But you got to realize Danny's like 14. She's a little girl. 
in the world, she's like, oh, I'm grown because I had a baby and stuff. Like, yeah, I don't know. That's a rabbit hole. I'm sure somebody's going to hear this and let me know in the comments what they think about that. But, yeah, so anyway, um, you know, it's really, it's just really funny because in the context of people crying a lot and then in Karth they have the faceless men, but they're called, I'm so sorry, or they're... They're called the sorry, the sorry assassin. I don't know. It's let me look it up because I should know that. But I'm telling you, it's really funny because they go, "I'm so sorry" before they <laughs> before they do something. Uh, Karth assassins. I typed in sorry Karth, sorrowful men. That's what they're called, right? So yeah, um, they go, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And what I thought of when I read that all the time, I die laughing, but I always forget to bring it up in live streams and I always forget to tweet about it. It's really funny. Because uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff like that, like really funny names of like guilds of uh, different orders, starry night priests, you know. There's different things like that that just kind of catch your attention. And, and, you know, my brain, the way, way it works, I, I stopped with the self-diagnosis stuff, but I, at one point I was saying in every video, oh, excuse me, I'm slightly autistic, or excuse me, I may have ADHD. I may have those things, but I'm going to stop saying that because there's people that are actually diagnosed with it, and I think they're sort of watch my videos and then, like, you know, for that reason. I don't know. It's not true. I, I, I Like, it could not be true, but I just looked it up one time, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that kind of sounds like me. I'm sure everybody does that. That's why they tell you not to look at WebMD, right? Uh, but anyway, um, so, uh, the, you know, the sorrowful men, I'm so sorry. It made me think of like the Italians in Scusi in Eurotrip, you know, the guy that comes and sits in the main characters, like cabin in the train and they go under a tunnel and he goes, Scusi, Scusi. And like every time that the lights go out and the train goes under a tunnel, he grabs them. Like, grabs their legs and stuff. It was really funny. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to kill you. I'm so sorry. Uh, <clears throat> let me know down in the comments if somebody says sorry, sorry. Or excuse me, excuse me. Do you think of Italian stuff? Or is that just me? Uh, so, remember, Stannis just cut his thumb to sign uh, in blood. Which is interesting because Tyrion does the same thing. Um... And signs his uh, contract with the uh, Second Sons, Brown Ben Plum, in blood. Um, uh, so, where is it? If it please your grace, it will please the Iron Bank. Stannis dipped a quill in the blood welling from his thumb and scratched his name across the board, across the piece of parchment. You will depart today, Lord Bolton. May, just in case you want to read along or read ahead, may be on us soon. I will not have even caught up. Did I return it to how it looked? Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. We good. Is it still recording? Yep. Can you imagine if it wasn't recording that whole time? Me personally, I can because that happens at least 35 times a year, which is too much. Um, so that would be my preference as well. The Bravosi slipped the roll of parchment inside a wooden tube. I hope to have the honor of calling on your grace again when you are seated on your iron throne. You hope to have your gold, you mean. Save your pleasantries. It is coin I need from Bravos, not empty courtesy. Tell the guard outside I have need of Justin Massey. It would be in my... Oh, uh, you know what's funny? Tatio Nostaris' voice is Italian. In the audiobooks that are done by the late, great uh, Roy Dotrice. Uh, I, I just remember that right now. You hope to have your gold, you mean... Wait, wait. <laughs> I gave Stannis the attack. Can you imagine Stannis sounding like that? Um, it would have been my pleasure. The Iron Blank is always glad to be of a service, the banker bowed. As he left, another entered. A knight. The king's knights had been coming and going all night. Theon recalled dimly. This one seemed to be the king's familiar. Lean. Uh, seemed to be the king's familiar. Lean, dark-haired, hard-eyed, his face marred by pockmarks and old scar. He wore a faded cercoid embroidered with tree moths. They're, I believe they're deathhead moths. 
Uh, but Theon just doesn't notice that. Remember, this whole thing is Theon's POV while he's hanging up on a wall in Stannis' chamber. Stannis is kind of a savage guy. I think Theon's going to potentially be burned. He's going to be burned. He's going to go and throw the fires and help Stannis. Maybe, maybe that'll be his end, right? Instead of what happens on the TV show. So on the TV show, remember, he helps Bran in Bran's dying moments. Bran says, you were a good man, Theon. And, uh, you know, he's all mute and stuff. He's like, you're a good man, Theon. You're a good man, Theon. Right? Um, uh, but, yeah, so maybe that's what will happen. Uh, we'll see. I have I haven't actually... I think I read this Theon one once. I had never read the Victarion one, so I was really hyped during that one. But I have read this once, but I just can't remember exactly how it ends. And remember... It kind of doesn't matter because it could look completely different when Winds of Winter comes out. This is just something that was written by George that at the time, you know, he was telling people all the time, like, yo, I'm this close to finishing it. And he would often do these chapter reads, chapter previews. You know, POVs are usually a lot longer than what this is, um, but it'll be a lot longer than it actually is if I don't hurry up and keep reading it. So anyway, uh, Theon's POV hanging up on the wall, right? So he's noticing all these different things. Uh Sire, he announced, this is the guy with the three death head moths. Uh, Sire, he announced, the maester is without, and Lord Arnolf sends word that he would be pleased to break his face to with you. The son as well, and the grandsons. Lord Wall seeks audience as well. He wants, I know what he wants, the king uh, indicated Theon. So he like nods his head. He's like the dude over there hanging up on the wall who's been watching us this whole time. Him. Wall wants him dead. Flint, Nori, all of them will want him dead for the boys he slew. Vengeance for their precious Ned. So remember, Theon, as far as all of these northern lords, and Catelyn, and King Rob, they all went to their deaths thinking that Theon had actually killed those boys. But Ramsay knows that Theon didn't actually kill those boys because he killed some other boys. Right? They were the uh, Miller's sons so some boys that lived nearby that were around brandon rickon's age theon pretended to kill them so that he could hold winterfell because he thought that not having hostages which is the one way you hold a place or just negotiate or do anything really in, in a war in westeros is by having hostages it's like the first thing everybody does is if there's people that yield you save them if they're a lord then you can ransom them back for gold and wealth or for some instances in Rob's contract that he that he sends, his terms that he sends to Tyrion when Tyrion's acting hand to the king, he says, uh, so in Clash of Kings, he says, look, we want, or Tyrion, I can't remember if it's Rob who says it or Tyrion, but it's really kind of a reasonable thing. He says, we want all these hostages, right? They're going to come stay with us, but on um, good behavior, we'll send back one a year for every year that you're good. So he'll send back the people to go live with their families, usually their children, right? Boys, firstborn sons, they're like heirs and stuff they want them right so that that way all of the people that you know are in the other houses and stuff will behave so that way they'll see their family members again right um uh so um uh what was i saying so theon with all of those people aside from you know everybody uh, that knows it is 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 Theon and Ramsay, and obviously Bran knows that he's still alive, and and well, Rickon knows that he's still alive, and also Walder Frey knows that they're still alive because Wex Theon Squire is one of the only other people who saw what happened. He saw Bran and Rickon escaping because he was in a tree, and when the shit went down, when Ramsay flipped and turned on Theon and killed everybody, um. Uh, you know, Wex was hiding in a tree, jumped a tree, right, and just sort of hid out. But after that all happened, that's when Brandon and Rickon escaped. So Wex saw them alive. So what Wex ended up doing was telling that to Wayman Manderley. Um, he comes into captivity of Wayman Manderley. So the last we hear of Wex is he goes with Davos uh, to go and get uh, Ned's heir, Rickon. Right? And then remember, Bran's north of the wall in a cave eating humans, pretending to see... Well, not pretending. He's actually seeing the future and going and affecting it. He already did it. He uh, In Clash of Kings, you know, he messes with John from the future. John recognizes him when he's in his work state in Ghost. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, they all want Theon dead, right? Where was that at, though? Uh, 
uh, will you oblige them? Uh, just now the turncloak is more used to me alive. He has knowledge we may need. Bring in the maester. Uh, the king plucked a parchment of, off the table, squinted over it, uh, a letter. Theon knew. It's a broken seal. Its broken seal was black wax, hard and shiny. I know what that says, he thought, giggling. Stannis looked up. The turncloak stirs. Theon, my name is Theon. Uh, he had to remember his name. I know your name. I know what you did. I saved her. The outer wall of Winterfell was 80 feet high. Beneath the spot where he had jumped, the snows had piled up to a death of more than 40. A cold white pillow. The girl had taken the worst of it. Jane, her name was Jane, but she will never tell them Theon had landed on top of her. <laughs> and broke... This part's not funny. And broken some of her ribs. Let me stop laughing because that's not funny. But just visually thinking of Theon landing on top of the girl when we all know it's supposed to be Theon catching the girl, right? That's how it typically goes in like when you're jumping out of buildings and fantasy and stuff. <laughs> George flips that on his head and he's like, yeah, Theon landed on top of her and broke her ribs. <laughs> I think that's, the, like I said. Uh, yeah, so I saved the girl, he said. We flew. Stannis snorted. You fell. Umber saved her. It's Moore's crow food, and his men had not been outside the castle. Bolton would have had the both of you back in moments. Uh, crow food, Theon remembered. An old man, huge and powerful, with a ruddy face and a shaggy white beard. He had been seated on a garren, clad on a pelt of a gigantic snow bear, its head his hood. Under it, he wore a stained white leather eye patch that reminded Theon of his uncle Euron. He wanted to rip it off of Umber's face to make certain that underneath it was only an empty socket and not a black eye shining with malice. Instead, he was whimpered through his broken. T Instead, he whimpered. He had whimpered through his broken teeth and said, "I am a turn cloak and a ken slayer." Crowfoot had finished. Wait, Crowfoot would be like a northern grumbly. A turn cloak and a ken slayer. Crowfoot had finished. You will hold that lying tongue or lose it. Uh, but Umber had looked at the girl closely, squinting down with his one good eye. You were the younger daughter, and Jane had nodded. Arya, my name is Arya. Now, if you're wondering why I skipped past the black eye shining with malice, just because I've done so many Euron videos, I don't want to do a tangent in that video. Go look for it. Go type in Sir Hunt's U U uh, Euron if you want it. If not, finish watching this. Um... Uh, and if you're watching this on Patreon, there's actually a version of it up here on Patreon, a longer version. I think both versions, uh, the version is on YouTube as well. But yeah, it's on, it's on Patreon if you don't want to go to YouTube. Um, but Umber had looked at the girl closely, squint. You are the younger daughter, and Jane had nodded. Arya, my name is Arya. Remember, Jane pulls pretending to be Arya. Uh, Arya of Winterfell, I. When I last was inside those walls, your cook served us a steak and kidney pie. Made with ale, I think. Best I ever tasted. What was his name, that cook? So this is where Crow's Food is questioning whether Jane Poole is uh, Arya. Right? So the biggest problem with Jane Poole, and even if you don't remember what she looks like, is that Arya has blue eyes. Right? They're described as, like, pale, I think. So they're, like, a light blue, just like our father's. And this girl has brown eyes. And I don't want to sound like a jackass. Like, Jane Poole has brown eyes. So Theon thinks to himself, her eyes are all wrong. Maybe Arya has the Tully blue eyes, but she physically looks like the Stark family. Let me look it up. Let me look up Arya's eye color, then I'll know for sure. Uh, Arya's... Blue eyes. Well, that's not from a reliable source. Let me look from the uh, Song of Ice and Fire wiki. <sighs> Come on, man. This should be easy. Arya Stark. Appearance. Positive, she has blue eyes. Just need to see it. Appearance and character. Image. She has gray eyes, right? My girlfriend has gray eyes. That's like a pale blue. My children have gray eyes. It's really embarrassing that I didn't remember that. But anyway, Jane pulls brown eyes. And Theon thinks to himself all the time, 
Oh, her eyes are wrong. Uh, I can't believe no one else is recognizing that her eyes are wrong. And then uh, people will call her Arya, or they'll think, or they'll say, like, oh, this is Ned's daughter, this is the key to the north, this is the lady, or whatever, and Theon just goes, no, 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 her name is Jane, rhymes with pain. <laughs> Theon, it's crazy to read those. Uh, uh, Theon's POV, it's one of the best, you know, all the POVs are really, really good, but Theon's specifically always stands out in my memory. Uh... Like, to recall stuff because of, you know, the events that he goes through and how he pretty much is the hooded man in Winterfell, you know. I've actually made a video on that as well if you want to watch. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. He's questioning uh, Jane Poole. Remember, her eyes are brown. Arya's eyes are blue. So even if you don't remember what Arya looks like, you know that her eyes are, well, not brown impossible to change your eye color unless you're a mummer unless you're melisandre you can potentially change your eye color like i always say how when i'm describing melisandre she's one of my favorite characters physically because you know i like women's right but also because of her looks right she's got red hair but she's got fire eyes john thinks of how her eyes are like fire stannis i'm oh, sorry davos uh, thinks about how her eyes look uh, and then also Ghost. Ghost eyes are described as like having fire. And then certain characters are having those eye colors. And usually they could be undead, right? Or long living, related to the old gods, right? But what's interesting is that Melisandre can glamour, right? She can use certain stones to increase colors of things, right? Like she can change the radiance and the hue of Stannis' sword to make it look like Lightbringer. So she could totally enhance her eye color. So Melisandre could just have hazel eyes that she makes look bright red. Or like, you know, some uh, maybe like a normal, like a reddish color, but she makes them look more red or something, you know? Anyway, uh, Crow's Food questioning. Questioning Jane. Fake Arya. Gage. Jane said it once. He was a good cook. He would, made, he would make lemon cakes for Sansa whenever we had lemons. Crow Food had fingered his beard. Dead now, I suppose. This Smith of yours as well. A man, uh, a man who knew his steel. What was his name? Jane had hesitated. Micken, Theon thought. His name was Micken. And we all know that from reading the books because Micken is often thought of, uh, you know, he's, a, he, he's alive and he dies at Winterfell when Theon goes in, I think. Uh, I think is when he dies. But also Arya's blade needle. It's always mentioned how it's got Micken's mark. And, you know, Ned, for instance, in book one in the Game of Thrones, he's like, I can't believe I don't even know this sword, right? When Ned finds uh, um, Arya with Needle, he's like, I can't believe that my, he knows it's from his own forge because it's got Micken's mark on it. So he's like, I can't believe I don't even know what my own, you know, blacksmith is making in my own, you know, <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't even know what's going on in my own home. What's going on here? You know what I mean? In a classic, like you know, family problem, kind of like father, you know, who thinks he has a handle on everything, but he actually quite doesn't. Uh, so anyway, Crow food his fingered his beard. Dead now, I suppose. That smith of yours as well. A man who knew his steel. What was his name? Jane had hesitated. Micken, Theon thought. His name was Micken. The castle blacksmith had never made any lemon cakes for Sansa, which made him far less important than the castle cook in that sweet little world she had shared with her friend Jane Poole. Remember, damn you, your father was the steward. He had charge of the whole household. The smith's name was Micken, Micken, Micken. I had put to death. I had put him to death before me. Uh, I had him put to death before me. So, you know, I was right, Theon. I just couldn't remember how Micken had died. But yeah, Theon had him put to death. Uh, Micken, Jane said. So that was Theon thinking like, all you did was hang out with Jane. Or, I'm sorry, Jane Poole. All you did was hang out with Sansa. So, Sansa, all she did was eat lemon cakes. That's all. It's funny that Theon, it's all the memory he has of her, right? Because that's one of the things that Sansa enjoys. But I think the actress on the TV show, Sophie Turner, actually hates lemon cakes. Which makes you wonder, is like, how you hate lemon cakes? I eat lemons all the time. I love lemons. But anyway, uh, although to be fair, lemon meringue pie is disgusting. It's disgusting. Lime, key lime pie. It's pretty nasty. I've had it a few different times, a few different kinds. And I'm like, yo, this tastes like it has the rinds in it. It's just, just give me the straight up, just give me a straight up lemon. I'll lick a lemon. 
I, 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 you know, when I was, when I was working at restaurants and I was really hungry, but you could only eat one, one time, you know, I usually would take that meal to go so I could actually sit down and enjoy it when I'm leaving, right? Uh, but then the, your food's sitting out for a long period of time, so that doesn't always work out, right? But anyway, I would eat lemons, because there'd always be lemons. Like, who's gonna, what is the boss gonna come and say, it's 17 cents, Hunter, I'm taking that out of your check. And I'd be like, all right. Okay, no one's ever told me, like, you can't eat a lemon, so they would always, in fact, be like, I, you won't eat that lemon, and then guess what, I'd eat the lemon, like, I'd peel it, and then I would eat it like a fucking orange, because it was good. Do I have a lemon in the house right now? No, because guess what, the last one I had, I did that in front of my girlfriend, because she wouldn't believe me. It's often why we don't have lemons past what we're using them to cook for, because I eat them. Jane, <laughs> Mickey, Mickey, Jane said, Moore's umber had grunted, I, what he might have said or done next, Theon never learned, for that was when the boy ran up, clutching a, the boy ran up, clutching a spear and shouting that the portcullis on Winterfell's main gate was rising, and how Crowfoot had grinned at that, Theon twisted in his chains and blinked down at the king. So they, that was when they took off, because obviously Ramsey and his men were coming out of the gates of Winterfell. The portcullis was up. Uh, Theon twisted in his chains and blinked down at the king. Crowfoot found us. Yes, he sent us here to you, but it was me who saved her. Ask yourself. Uh, hang on, my children just got back from their walk with mama. Let me go check to make sure everybody all right. Everybody all right up in there. Damn, my arms look fat this whole video. I got to start sitting flexed. So anyway, what? What? You think it's weird? You think it's weird that I'm doing this? That ain't weird. This is just how I read. I read like this. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, where was I actually? Theon twisted in his chains and blinked down at the king. Crowfoot found us, yes. He sent us here to you, but it was me who saved her. Ask yourself. She would tell him, you saved me, Jane had whispered as he was carrying her through the snow. She was pale with pain, but he had brushed one hand across his cheek and smiled. I saved Lady Arya, Theon whispered back at her. And then, all at once, Moore's umber spears were all around them. Is this my thanks? He asked Spanist, kicking feebly against the wall. His shoulders were in agony. His own weight was tearing them from their sockets. How long had he been hanging here? Was it still night outside? The tower was windowless. He, he had no way to know. Unchain me, and I will serve you. As you served Roos Bolton and Rob Stark, Stannis snorted. I think not. We will have a warmer end in we have a warmer end in mind for you, turn cloak, but not until we're done with you. He means to kill me. The thought was queerly comforting. Death did not frighten Theon Greyjoy. Death would mean an end to pain. Be done with me, then, he urged the king. Take my head off. And stick it on a spear. I slew Lord Eddard's sons. I ought to die. But do it quick. He is coming. Who is coming? Bolton? Lord Ramsay? Theon hissed. The son. Not the father. You must not let him take him. Uh. Um, oh yeah, who's coming? Bolton? Lord Ramsay, Theon hissed. The son, not the father. You must let him take him. Roos. Roos is safe within the walls of Winterfell with his fat new wife. Ramsay is coming. Ramsay Snow, you mean. 
The bastard. Never called him that. Spittle sprayed from Theon's lips. Ramsey Bolton. Wait, let me do this right. Ramsey, Ramsey Bolton. Not Ramsey Snow. Never Snow. Never. You have to remember his name or he will hurt you. I guess it would be better to do it like a Smeagol because Theon is definitely uh, George's version of Gollum. Like you could have, uh, or Smeagol, you know, you could have many, many conversations about which characters represent which Lord of the Rings counterparts. And it's actually kind of hard, especially when you read the Lord of the Rings. If you watch the movies, you can be like, oh yeah, Jon Snow's like Aragorn. You know what I mean? Or Jon Snow's like Frodo, actually, technically. Uh, or Jon Snow's this, or Daenerys is like that, right? But once you read the Lord of the Rings books, it's actually quite difficult to try to pin down because George is so good at taking from all these different things and amalgamating it to his own thing that it's hard to pin down one character for one, you know, counterpart for Lord of the Rings. So anyway, um... I was saying Theon would be close to just like a tormented person, you know. Smeagol is tormented by the ring, makes him live for a long time, which is not really relevant to Theon, but the fact that he's tormented, uh, you know, he kills his his best friend Deagle, right? Isn't his best friend's name Deagle? Um, and, you know, when he's Smeagol, he's a character, he's basically a halfling, similar to a halfling, not quite a hobbit, but almost, like the thing before, like hobbits, right? So... Uh, kind of like on the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power show, whatever those little things are. I remember we saw at the beginning of Return of the King, it's that POV that actually doesn't happen until much, much later. And then uh, I think Gandalf is telling Aragorn, maybe Gandalf is telling someone else about, you know, the deagle Smeagol thing. So anyway, what happens is, is uh, Smeagol and Deagle are best friends, and they're out, you know, fishing. And uh, it's Deagle's birthday, right? Which is kind of irrelevant right now. But Smeagol and Deagle are fishing. And Deagle ends up finding this ring. And immediately Smeagol's like, let me get it. It's a gift. Or something. And uh, he ends up killing his best friend. Over it. Over the ring. So Smeagol eventually, over the over the centuries, turns into Gollum. Uh, and, uh, you know, Theon, over time, is tortured... Uh, well, he's tortured mentally right away as soon as he takes Winterfell. <laughs> he's tortured mentally as soon as we get his first POV in a Clash of Kings because he's like a tormented dude. He was a hostage his entire life from the time he was 10 years old. Uh, before that, he was a kid, just like any kid that was in a hot, that was in a rich house in Westeros. They had it made way better than all the other kids out in the countryside and outside the castle. You know what I mean? Um, so, But then, you know, Theon's older brothers and his father, Bellon, rebelled. So they died in a rebellion. And then, remember I was talking about the hostage thing. They took Theon as a hostage and he went to Ned Stark. And honestly, that's the best place he could have gone because Ned Stark is a pretty straight dude. He's a pretty straightforward all right guy, right? Uh, you know, Theon was treated a little bit better than Jon Snow. Uh, to be honest, Jon Snow developed a different type of personality than Theon. So maybe there's details... That could potentially be revealed when George wraps up the story about Theon's time. Like maybe if Theon has a conversation with Jon Snow. Or with actual Arya or Sansa. And they don't immediately murder him. You know? Um, <clears throat> so. Theon wants to die. He's been tormented for so long he wants to die. Uh, and I think ultimately. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Gollum dies falling into Mount Doom in the movies. Damn, that's embarrassing. I've only read Lord of the Rings. Not enough to remember exactly. Damn, that's embarrassing. I'm just going to skip past this part. But yeah, so yeah. I was trying to sound smart, but I can't remember exactly how the book ends. My brain is holding... Well, it's holding too much information in prep for this video. But it's not holding enough information if I can't remember that. <laughs> Let me drink some sody. Drink some sody. Never call him that. Spittle Fred sprayed from Theon's lips. Ramsey Bolton, not Ramsey Snow. Never Snow, never. You have to remember his name or he will hurt you. He is welcome to try. 
whatever name he goes by. The door opened with a gust of cold black wind and a swirl of snow. The Knight of the Moss had returned with the maester the king had sent for, his gray robes concealed beneath a heavy bearskin pelt. Behind him then came two other knights, each carrying a raven in a cage. One was the man who had been with Asha when the banker delivered him to her, uh, a burly man with a winged pig on his surcoat. The other was taller, broad-shouldered, and brawny. The big man's breastplate was uh, silver inlaid with Nihello, though scratched and dented. It still shone with candlelight. The cloak that wore over it was fastened with a burning heart. Now, if you're, if you're watching this and you've never read the books, or if you've only read Fire and Blood and you found me from the House of the Dragon TV show, uh, George spends a lot of time describing uh, not just armor and clothing, but also food, right? And everything about his world in great detail. It doesn't really leave a lot when it comes to world building gaps in your mind uh, that are left to fill in unless you look outside of the known world. And the known world are places that the characters are located in. So, for, for instance, right? So... You kind of discover stuff through their eyes. So Daenerys is the only POV as of right now outside of Barriss and Selmy. And Tyrion, you know, that didn't happen with Tyrion until Dance with Dragons. Tyrion's missing from A Feast for Crows. He's gone from the entire book, which is honestly why I think a lot of readers, at least I learned after I read the books, a lot of readers didn't like those books because Tyrion, who had the most POVs, is missing from the entire book. So he doesn't show up until A Dance of Dragons. Then when he does show up, he's in Essos. But the other four books, um, you know, his, his POVs were replaced with not just Brienne's, but also Cersei. So that's really cool. Um, we didn't have a POV until we get hers in Feast for Crows. Um, uh... But yeah, so the the world building in George's books are amazing. So, you know, when he's describing stuff like with the Nihello this and the embroidery belch and this and that, and it's like it's dope because you have an exact image of uh, who this person is, what this person looks like. Which is another reason why when TV shows like Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon or whatever other show comes out tries to stray away from canon, people get mad because we know exactly what it looks like and we know exactly who they look like or what their armor is supposed to look like. But sometimes they can do things that exceed, uh, which is a lot of the times the case with House of the Dragon, they can do things that exceed your imaginary expectations and uh, what's put in our heads from George. Like this, this Damon armor is painted by my boy Jay Fox. Go follow him on Instagram. I follow him. Uh, uh, so go and look him. I think his Instagram is private. Uh, he needs to make it public because he's an amazing painter. I guess he's he doesn't really, you know, like, I guess, uh, you know, he's busy all the time painting, obviously, because he's very talented. You That kind of skill you constantly have to work at, right? Um, but uh, I think he doesn't... Um, have his Instagram public or whatever, but yeah, I don't know, you can still go follow him, request to follow him, and then he'll, you know, obviously let you follow him, um, so anyway, uh, damn, I think I skipped past where I was, Maester Tybold announced the Knight of the Moths, <laughs> that's funny, Theon doesn't know who he is, so he calls him the Knight of the Moths, which he has the three moths on the circle, remember, the Maester sank to his knees, he was red-haired and round-shouldered, with close-set eyes that kept flicking toward Theon, hanging on the wall. Your grace, how may I be of service? Stannis did not reply at once. He studied the man before him. His brow furrowed. Get up, the maester rose. You are the maester at the Dreadfort. How is it you are here with us? Lord Arnolf brought me to tend his wounded. To his wounded or his ravens? Uh, uh, both, bo both, your, your grace. Both, Stannis snapped the word out. A maester's ravens fly to one place and one place only. Is that correct? The maester mopped sweat from his brow with his sleep. N not, not entirely, y your grace. M m most, yes. Uh, some few be taught to fly between two castles. Such birds are greatly prized, and one... In a very great while, we'll find a raven who can learn the names of, of three or 
or f four or five castles and fly to each one, one upon command. Birds are clever as this. All right, let me not make them stutter so much. As that came along only once in a hundred years. Stannis gestured at the black birders in the cages. These two are not so clever, I presume. No, no your, your grace, were that it were so. Tell me then, where are these two trained to fly? Maester Tybalt did not answer. Theon Greyjoy kicked his feet feebly and laughed under his breath. Caught! <laughs> uh, what is Theon R. Kelly? Answer, answer me, if we were to lose these birds, would they return to the dread fort? Damn, I lost the young's voice. Or, uh, Stannis' voice. The king leaned forward. Or might they fly for Winterfell instead? Maester Tybalt, Maester, Maester Tybalt pissed his robes. Theon could not see the dark stain spreading from where he hung, but the smell of piss was sharp and strong. George was like, Theon can't see it, but he can smell it. Mr. Tybalt has lost his tongue. Stannis observed to his knights, Godry, how many cages did you find? Three, your grace, said the big knight in the silvered breastplate. One was empty. Y y y Wait, I forgot those were people talking. Damn. Your grace, my, my orders sw sworn to save we... I know all about your vows. What I want to know is what in the letter that you sent to Winterfell did you perchance... No more accents. Did you perchance tell Lord Bolton where to find us? Sire. Round-shouldered Tybalt drew himself up proudly. The rules of my order forbode... I forgot I make, gotta make my arms look muscular since I'm sitting here. But, or I don't make my arms like that. This is just how I read. The rules of my order forbid me to divulge the contents of Lord Arnold's letters. Your vows are stronger than your bladder, it would seem. Ooh, so piss pants boy got caught. Your grace must understand. Must I, the king shrugged. If if you say so, you're a man of learning. After all, uh, wait, why stand is grinning his teeth? I had a maester on Dragonstone who almost was a father to me, which is interesting. Because Maester Clytus would have loved to hear that, Stannis. But you never... I don't think he ever said it to him. He just thought himself as like a father to you. Because, well, he was with Stannis from a very young age. From when Stannis saw his father die in a storm. In a ship. Stannis didn't like actually see his dad drown in the water. But the ship that his dad was on, he saw drown in the water. It's kind of terrible. It's what messed Stannis and Robert up. If you ever wonder why the characters are the way they are, right? So Renly was the youngest. It didn't really affect him because he was so young, right? Uh, there's there's people that have theories uh, that Renly, because she because Renly looks so much like Robert is Robert's bastard, but I don't believe that. Um, but Renly was really young when it happened, right? So Stannis and Robert, it affected. And yes, they were young, and yes, they may suppress the memory, but we never have a POV of Stannis and Robert, so we don't actually know if it's like a cornerstone memory like... Uh, the Ned memory is, that's my dog, he's sleeping, like a, a corn, like a cornerstone memory with it is with Ned and when, uh, what we assume is Jon Snow being born and his sister, right? And also memories of Rhaegar and stuff because with Ned's POV, he thinks about certain memories and he's like, man, I haven't thought of that. <laughs> Hang on a second because he's about to start. Yeah, he's running. He's running in his sleep. Hang on. Had to give him a treat because I woke him up. <laughs> Um, I don't even know if y'all could hear that. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, he was making the noises. Um, so where was I? Uh, uh, so yeah, so if you ever wonder why Stannis and, you know, um, Robert Baratheon, is it recording? Yes, it is. Um, are the way they are is because they, well, they saw their parents die. So not just their father, but their mother too. Um... So, you know, it caused Robert to be like a drunkard. I'm just sort of describing their characters. But also, you know, a drunkard, yes, but that's something kind of that he develops through his whole life. He doesn't get really that that bad at seemingly over the last like maybe five years or so 
up until when Ned goes to him. Like, obviously, he drank a lot. Um, but in his younger days, it doesn't really seem like that was something that he necessarily did a lot. Of course he did, but everybody did back then because the water was always poisoned. It's the medieval... It's written in a medieval style era, so water is bad. So people, everybody was drinking. But Robert was known as a great warrior, and he was strong, and he won a lot of battles and tourneys. And not necessarily tourneys, but he was just a strong dude, a very formidable opponent, right? Um, that's the mental image that I have of him. Remember, there's no POV, but the, uh, that makes me think that he didn't drink that much, right? It was something that he did later. It was something after... He thinks it's because he lost Liana, right? But ultimately, it's because he saw his parents die. He thinks it's because he lost this the love of his life. But really, it was never that was never the case. From multiple different accounts, from Ned Stark's POV, from what uh, Daenerys is told, from Barristan Selmy, what uh, you know, uh, the little bit of things that we see from Brand's POV and like what the mostly what the TV show has shown us because we haven't had a lot of information revealed about that time period, right? That's why we don't necessarily know for sure. Uh, well, I mean, we know for sure Jon Snow's parents are Rhaegar and Lyanna, but what happens at that tourney is not what Robert makes it seem as though it is. Like it wasn't enough to lose a kingdom over. Targaryens do that kind of shit. Robert was putting all of his anger from watching his parents die into that. That's what I'm trying to get at here. And then with Stannis, uh, you know, Stannis is like, the reason why I'm so messed up is because my brother doesn't love me. My brother loves Ned more than me. And like, uh, yeah, that's the case. Because to be fair, the two brothers, right? Stannis and, and Renly too, but he's young, right? So, But Stannis and Robert, they all they had were each other, right? And then, you know, Robert sort of ran away from home. Anything that reminded him of his parents and hung out with Ned a lot. Now, to be fair, they were both fostered by John Aaron in the Vale. Stannis wasn't really there. Stannis doesn't realize that. Stannis doesn't realize that Robert just has a better relationship with Ned. Um, so Stannis thinks that the reason why he's so messed up is because Robert treated him so unfairly and he never got his just due. But really, it's because he saw his parents die. Uh, you know, it makes you wonder. I, if I haven't seen all of George's interviews, but it makes you wonder what he's seen. Right, that's changed him, and then he figured it out later through like writing or something. But none of those characters would figure it out in that world because psychiatrists don't exist. But it's it's really interesting because a lot of people would be like, "Oh yeah, Stannis is Stannis is the man," or or, or Stannis is the manish. A lot of, of course, a lot of people like Stannis. I like Stannis, right? But they'll be like, he's just like a patriarchy guy. Like he thinks that you know he should be the king because it's his right and all this stuff. And really. Anything that he does kind of goes back to that. Like, yo, he saw his parents drown in an ocean. And get this, they had gone really far, and they had made it almost back. <laughs> so, like, it's not that, that like, like, I don't think I made the best mental image if you've never read that. But he's standing on shore. Him and Robert are on shore, right? And their parents are in a ship close enough to be seen to the point where it's going down. They're, they're like, drowning in the ocean. The only person that survived that was Patchface, the fool that potentially is Shireen Baratheon's father. There's rumors that Stannis sent Patchface to go and have sex with Shireen. The TV show made her have like all those jars, and I can't really say that stuff because this video literally will get demonetized, but they have all those jars of stuff, you know, of like, you know, Stannis' sons and stuff like that does not happen in the books i don't know what made dan and dave do that they didn't really like stannis that much but um yeah so you know there's a lot of messed up uh stuff there going on mentally with those characters but it's really interesting like i said because they just get blanket labels like oh yeah stannis is this dude he's his patriarch no, it's like he thinks this one thing which is that his brother was never really that good of a friend to him he's never he doesn't really you know Renly taunt, uh, like taunts him like a younger brother does you know what I mean they're the jokester right um they always feel like they have to uh you know they're the baby they're the youngest they don't know as much right so they just try to because they're they may be intimidated by their older brother they make jokes so Renly pulls out a peach he's like he's a peach brother We've both got armies. You've got an army. I've got an army. But really, if Stannis and Renly went down, like if they fought, 
combat themselves without Brienne of Tarth and like you know Stannis with Melisandre and his guards. Like if they if they hadn't, I think it was Sir Axel Florin is the one who's at the meeting. If they hadn't have had them with them, and it was just the two brothers, you know, Renly and Stannis, Renly would have gotten his ass whooped, and I think he knows that. So he makes a joke, and he's like, "Here's a peach." That's what you would do in a situation that you're nervous in. If you're afraid of whoever you're with, you're like, let me defuse this tension. Would you like a peach, good good, good sir, brother? Uh, you know, Renly's confident in the fact that behind a massive army, he can defeat Stannis. But it's it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, we don't have a Renly POV, but we have a Catelyn POV. And Catelyn is very good at analyzing uh, certain aspects of the war. So, like, how, you know, like, she calls certain knights. I've tweeted all this stuff, and I've talked about all this stuff before, so I'm kind of repeating myself here. But, um, you know, she's very good at, like, kind of seeing where things are going. It's kind of kind of sucks that she comes back and she's so she's so messed up because I would, I would love for a POV from her before she dies because she's probably going to die again. She came back as Lady Stoneheart, right? She's just killing people left and right, even people that were innocent and didn't really have anything to do with the Red Wedding. She's killing them. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, it'd be cool to see where, where she's at mentally. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, uh, where was I? Uh, make sure it's still recording. We're still recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that's enough. Uh, oh yeah, he just found out he peed. Your grace must understand. Must I? The king shrugged. If you say so, you're a man of learning after all. I had a master, I had a maester on Dragonstone who was almost a father to me. That's why I stopped that. I have great respect for your order and its vows. Sir Clayton does not share my feelings, though. He learned all he knows in the winds of Flea Bottom, where I put you in his charge. He might struggle with your own chain or scoop your eye out with a spoon. He might strangle you with your own chain or scoop your eye out with a spoon. Only only the one, your grace, volunteering the balding knight, him of the winged pig. <laughs> That's Theon's internal notes. Because remember, Theon's kind of the POV of this witnessing all these other characters. It's an interesting way to write a book because a lot of authors would make a would like switch maybe a few POVs in a scene just so that you don't have a lot of um, like like him of the winged pig, right? You wouldn't know if it's your first time reading this kind of, you wouldn't necessarily know. Maybe it's just me because I'm a slower reader, right? But I wouldn't necessarily catch the fact that we're thinking from Theon's POV, but the, the surcoat, the arms of the person is probably a winged, some type of small animal, maybe potentially a pig. And Theon is thinking, hey, this is this is him of the winged pig. Remember, he was thinking earlier of the three moths, and I think it was the Deathhead's moths. So he, he doesn't know who these people are. He's just kind of paying attention, and George is reminding of us that by saying, like, yo, volunteer the balding knight, him of the winged pig. That's the way Theon sees, like, Theon has hair. Well, he had hair. He's, he's losing it. It's gray, and he's got only a few strains that remain in the top. But if you have hair, you think of, that's one thing you'll notice is like if somebody's bald and you're trying to describe them to somebody, you'd be like, oh, yeah, it was a bald dude, such and such, blah, 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 or whatever. Like, that's, it's, I don't know. Uh, it's just something I noticed. I feel like I needed to say that. How many eyes does a maester need to read a letter? Asked Stannis. Now, Stannis, you know there's only one. One should suffice, I'd think. I would not wish to leave you unable to fulfill your duties to your lord. Roos Bolton's men may well be on their way to attack us even now. However, so you must understand if I skimp on certain courtesies. I will ask you once again. What was in the message you sent to Winterfell? The maester quivered. A, a, a map, your grace. The king leaned back in his chair. Get him out of here, he commanded. Leave the ravens. A vein was throbbing in his neck. 
I don't know if you can hear that. Confine the gray wretch to one of the huts. Ow, that just gave me like a weird back problem. It's probably because of how shitty my posture is in this video. Uh, get him out of here, he commanded. Leave the ravens. A vein was throbbing in his neck. Confine the gray wretch in one of the huts until I decide what is to be done with him. It will be done, the big knight declared. The maester vanished in another blast of cold and snow. Only the knight of the three moths remained. Stannis glowered up at Theon. Tag, boy, I need to pick up. I'm going to read for like five or six paragraphs before uh, I... Uh, Uh, like stop again, cause this this video is gonna be long as hell. Uh, Stannis glowered up at Theon, where he hung. You are not the only, you are not the only turncloak here. It would seem, would that all the lords in the Seven Kingdoms had but a single neck? He turned to his knight, Sir Richard. While last time. Because Stannis wants to chop all their heads off at once. It's like Dwight in the office when he's like, how'd you kill three people with one bullet? You line them up in a row, and then Dwight lines up three people up, and he goes, shoot them in the neck. <laughs> the office is uh, the she is. Uh, you are not the only... Uh, Sir Richard, while it's time breaking fast with Lord Arnolf, that means eating breakfast, you are to disarm his men and take them into custody. Most while, Most will be asleep. Do them no harm, unless they resist. It may be they did not know. Question some upon the point, but sweetly. If they had no knowledge of his treachery, they shall have the chance to prove their loyalty. He snapped a hand in dismissal. Send in Justin Massey. Another night, Theon knew, when Massey entered. This one was fair, with a neatly trimmed blonde beard and thick, straight hair so pale it seemed more white than gold. His tunic bore the triple spiral, an ancient sigil for an ancient house. I was told your grace has need of me, he said from one knee. Stannis nodded. You will escort the Bravosi banker back to the wall. Choose six good men and take twelve horses. To ride or eat? The king was not amused. I want you gone before midday, Sir Lord Bolton. Uh, sir, Lord Bolton could be on us any moment, and it is imperative that the banker return to Bravos. You shall accompany him across the narrow sea. Stannis is trying to secure that money. If there is to be a battle, my place is here with you. Your place is where I say it is. I have five hundred swords as good as you, or better, but you, <laughs> Stannis is good at putting people in a place. But you have a pleasing manner and a glib tongue, and those will be of more use to me at Bravos than here. The Iron Bank has opened up its coffers to me. You will collect their coin and hire ships and sell swords. A company of good repute. If you can find one, uh, the Golden Company would be my first choice if they are not already. Stand as little do you know. They're already in Westeros. And they go buy them from Aegon. You'd have to defeat Aegon and open in battle and then buy the Golden Company. Good luck. Aegon potentially could ride one of those dragons Daenerys has. Seek for them in the disputed lands if need be. But first hire as many swords as you can find in Bravos and send them to me by way of Eastwatch. Archers as well. We need more bows. Uh, Sir Justin's hair had fallen down across one eye. He pushed it back and said, The captains of the free companies will join a lord more readily than a mere knight, your grace. I hold no, neither lands nor titles. Why should they sell their swords to me? Go to them with both fifths full of dragons. Golden dragons, the king said in an acid tone. That should prove persuasive. Yeah, and he'd get robbed. I ro if I was one of those cell swords, I would rob him. Twenty thousand men should suffice. And like, hey, Stannis, come get your money back. Did not return with fewer. Uh, do not return with fewer, sire. Might I speak more freely? Uh, so long as you speak quickly, so long as Sir Hunter reads quickly, this is a long video, your grace should go to Bravos with the banker. Is that your counsel, that I should flee? Uh, the king's face darkened. That was your counsel on the Blackwater as well as I recall. When the battle turned against us, I let you and 
uh, whorp chivy me to Dragonstone like a whip cur. The day was lost, your grace. Aye, that was what you said. The day was lost. Fall back now, that you may fight again, and now you would have me scamper across the narrow sea. Actually, he's got a point there, Stannis, but just, like, abandon the Winterfell thing until you get some reinforcements because your people, your, 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 your army's eating people. He's kind of politely trying to say this is a bad idea. That's what Justin is, Justin Ma Massey, I think it's Justin Massey, that's what he's trying to say. And it'd be interesting if Justin Massey does go away because he kind of has a thing with Yara right now. Yara has a thing also um, with, uh, uh, believe it or not, a Mormont girl, right? Um, I believe it's Daisy Mormont. Is it Daisy Mormont? I know Daisy Mormont used to like be like Rob's, one of Rob Stark's best friends. But she has a copy of, um, if it is Daisy Mormont, one of the Mormont girls, like all the Mormonts are working with the Starks. Right now, unless uh, the Mormont women, unless you are, uh, you know, unless you're Jor, Jor, because you're dead. And if you're Jor, well, then you're working with Tenetis. But not anymore because you're working with Tyrion. Because Tyrion has saved your life multiple times. So maybe Jor, don't be such a dick. But anyway, uh, potentially his Rob Stark's will, and in Star Rob Stark's will, Jon Snow is named his heir. So Jon Snow has a. Uh, you know, Stannis was going to name John a legitimate heir, but then John decided not to, and John didn't do it until it was too late. John decides he's so stupid. John is offered twice by Stannis to go and be turned into a real lord, a real boy, like Pinocchio. If you didn't know that, if you don't speak Italian like myself, I speak Italian spaghetti, fettuccine, Alfredo, rigatoni, right? Sopranos, right? New York, right? Spaghetti pizza, pasta italiana, rigatoni pizza. Pasta Chef Aboyardilla, right? If you don't speak Italian like me, you didn't notice. Um, damn, I forgot the joke. But it's actually pronounced however I just said it. I forgot what it was. Dang. Is my computer battery about to die? That'd be funny if my laptop was about to die. Nah, it's good. We good. All right. Arigatoni, fatachoni, bacatroni. Um... Oh, yeah, you know, Jon Snow did it too late, yeah, so he he's stupid because he could have been legitimized. I don't know, I was making a, some kind of point. Uh, but, yeah, Stannis, just to inform you, the Golden Company is kind of uh, occupado and actually closer than you think, um, as in in Westeros, not that they're in the north, they're in the south. They just made, they just took Griffin's roost. Um... Is it, uh, the day was lost, Your Grace. Oh, wait. To raise an army, uh, as bitter steel did after the Battle of the Red Grass Field, where Damon Blackfire fell. Do not prate me of history, Sir Damon. Uh, sir, Damon Blackfire was a rebel and a usurper. Bitter steel, a bastard. When he fled, so they're talking about the very first Blackfire Rebellion. When he fled, he swore he would return to, which is basically where two Targaryen heirs who were, uh, they're like competing over, you know, who will rule the Iron Throne. Kind of what's happening in House of the Dragon, minus the dragons. There's no dragons. Uh, you know, Daenerys brings them back. Uh, after they all die in the events of the House of the Dragons. So, you know, the original Dance of the Dragons and History wipes out the dragons. Blackfire Rebellions are a series of wars that happen, I mean, internal conflicts, circ Targaryen civil wars. Basically, there's too many Targaryens, too many heirs. It's not one definitive one, so they go to war to figure it out. And it's a series of heirs that descend from uh, the first Blackfire, right, who declares himself Daemon Blackfire, right, and all of his heirs warred out with the regular Targaryen heirs. So anyway... Uh, do not prate me of history, Sir Damon Blackfire was a rebel, usurper, bit of steel, a bastard. Uh, I'm skipping to where I actually was. Um, he, he swore he would return to place a son of Damon's upon the Iron Throne. He never did. Words are wind, and the wind that blows exiles across the narrow sea or seldom blows them back. That boy Viserys Targaryen spoke of return as well. He slipped through my fingers at Dragonstone, only to... S yeah, the little, the little kid you missed from killing to spend his life wheedling after sellswords. The beggar king, they called him, in the free cities. Well, I do not beg, nor I will flee again. I am Robert's heir, the rightful king of Westeros. My place is with my me. Yours is with Robert. 
<laughs> go <laughs> Carol's mom is a bank me. Mm. <laughs> go with the banker and do as I have bid. As you command, Sir Justin said. Uh, it, good, because if you hadn't just listened to Stannis after he said all that, you'd be dead. Um, it may be that we shall lose this battle, the king said grimly. In Bravos, you may hear that I am dead. It may be even true. You shall find my cell swords nonetheless. The knight hesitated. Your grace, if you are dead, you will avenge my death and see my daughter on the Iron Throne or die in the attempt. Sir Justin put one hand on the sword hilt. Okay, yeah, sure. On my honor as a knight. You have my word. <laughs> you just gave me a free army, Stannis. You're gonna die. <laughs> oh, and the Stark girl with you. Oh, and take the Stark girl with you. Deliver her to Lord Commander Snow on your way to Eastwatch. Stannis tapped the parchment that lay before him. A true king pays his debts. Pay it, I, thought Theon. Pay it with false coin. Remember, the guy who's watching all this, the narrator of the POV Theon, Jon Snow would see through the imposter at once. Lord, Yeah, because it's his favorite sister. He knows he, she has blue eyes. Lord Stark's sullen bastard had uh, brown Jane Poole, and he had always been fond of his half-sister Arya. The Black Brothers will accompany you as far as Castle Black, the king went on. The Iron Men are to remain here, supposedly to fight for us. Another gift from Taicho Nostoris. Just as well, they would only slow you down. Iron men were made for ships, not horses. Lady Arya should have a female companion as well. Take Alassane Mormont. So that's who it is. I thought it was Daisy Mormont. Alassane Mormont. Daisy Mormont is Rob Stark's squire, I think. It was his best friend in the War of the Five Kings before Rob died, obviously. But she's got a copy of his will that names Jon Snow's heir. Um, so anyway... Sir Justin pushed his hair back again, and he says, and Lady Asha, remember I told you he's got a thing with Asha going right now. Basically, he's the only one that kind of, like, respects Asha enough to protect her from the worser people that are in Stannis' camp, right? So the king considered that a moment. No. Uh, well, one day your grace will need to take the Iron Islands. That will go much easier with Balon's, uh, Balon Greyjoy's daughter as a cat's ball with one of your own leal men as her lord husband. You, the king scowled, the woman is wed, Justin. A proxy marriage, never consummated, easily set aside. So Dust Justin really wants that pussy. The groom is old besides, like to die soon. From a sword through his belly, if you... Uh, damn, scrolling messes me up, bro. Uh, from a sword through his belly, if you have your way, Sir Worm. Theon knew how these knights thought, so... Th Theon is like kind of like I guess protective of his sister a little bit but also protective of her husband uh, Stannis pressed his lips together serve me well in this matter of the cell swords and you may have what you desire until such time this woman needs remain my captive Sir Justin bow, bowed his head uh, I understand the only that only seemed to irritate the king your understanding is not required only your obedience be on your way sir this time when the knight took his leave the world beyond the door seemed more white than black stan sparathian paced the floor the tower was a small one dank and cramped a few steps brought the king around to theon how many men does bolton have at winterfell uh five thousand six more he gave the king a ghastly grin. All shattered teeth. Ew, Theon, ugly ass mom. All shattered teeth and splinters. More than you. Uh, how many of those uh, is he like to send against us? Uh, no more than half. I just got the mental image of the kindly man that smiles at Arya and has worms crawling through his teeth, but Arya plucks one out and eats it, and that's what gets her into the faceless men is that she can eat bugs. And she's made fun of eating bugs in Clash of Kings uh, by... Uh, Hot Pie and Lamy, it's funny, they're all saying they're hungry, and she's and, and she's like, I'm hungry too, and they're like, no you aren't, bug eater, you've already full off the bugs. And she's like pulling a Timon and Pumbaa, and they're mad that she can like get over the cringe of eating bugs. She would have been really good on Fear Factor. You know, remember Joe Rogan used to make people eat worm milkshakes, like they would take earthworms, grind them up into milkshakes, pour horse sperm into that milkshake, and then put like... Uh, Madagascar hissing cockroaches into that milkshake and then make them drink it. Arya would have been like, that was breakfast on me way to River on time to get to my mother before the Red Wedding. You know? Um, uh, uh, 
This time, when the knight took his leave, the world beyond the door seemed more white than black. Stannis Baratheon paced before the... Uh, for how many of... How, remember, Theon smiled with his ugly teeth. How many of those is he like to send against us? No more than half. That was a guess, admittedly, but it felt right to him. Roose Bolton was not a man to blunder blindly out into the snow map or no. He would hold his men, his main strength in reserve, keep his best men with him, trust in Winterfell's massive double wall. The castle was too crowded. Men were at each other's throats, the Mandalays and the Freys especially. It's them uh, his lordships sent after you, the ones that he is well rid of. Wayman Manderly, the king's mouth twisted in contempt. Lord, too fat to sit a horse. Too fat to come to me, yet he comes to Winterfell. Too fat to bend the knee and swear me his sword, yet he now wields the sword for Bolton. I sent my onion lord to treat with him, and Lord Too Fat butchered him, mounted his head and hands on the wall of White Harbor for the phrase to gloat over, and the phrase has the red wedding been forgot in the phrase has the red wedding been forgotten so stannis thinks that davos is dead he doesn't realize that women sent davos to uh this place called skagos where uh rickon was sent remember theon squire wex saw rickon and bran split up but alive at winterfell um so stannis thinks that women is a traitor for killing uh basically a criminal women kills a criminal who kind of looks like Davos, but that's so that Davos can go and do this secret mission. Because uh, remember, Wyman is having double loyalties with Roose Bolton, who's loyal to the Iron Throne, right? Um, so, uh, my girlfriend just asked me if I want to go get ice cream. Well, yes, but I gotta do this. Uh, I sent my onion... Uh, 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 the North remembers the Red Wedding. Lady Hornwood's fingers. <laughs> that sounds like a porn. Lady Hornwood's fingers. <laughs> the sack of Winterfell, Deepwood Mott, and Torn Square. They remember all of it. Bran and Rickon. They were only Miller's boys. Frey and Manderly will never combine their strengths. They will come for you, but separately. Lord Ramsay will not be far behind them. He wants his bride back. He wants Reek. Theon's laugh was half a titter, half a whimper. Lord Ramsay is, is one of them, your grace, should you fear. Stannis bristled at that. I defeated your uncle Victorion in his iron fleet off Fair Isle. The first time your father crowned himself, I held storms in against the power of the Reach for a year. And Dragonstone, just checking to make sure it's still recording and stuff. In uh, Dragonstone, where was that at? Uh, and took Dragonstone from the Targaryens. I smashed Mance Raider at the wall, though he had twenty times my numbers. Tell me, Turncloak, what battles has the bastards of Bolton ever won that I should fear him? You must not call him that. A wave of pain washed over Theon Greyjoy. He closed his eyes and grimaced. When he opened them again, he said, You do not know him, no more than he knows me. Knows me, cried one of the ravens. No, no, me, cried one of the ravens uh, the maester had left behind. It flapped its bleak black wings against the bars of the cage. Oh, shit, is that Mormont's raven? Um, it's, it's, it's interesting because Sam trains the ravens at Castle Black, but why would the Castle Black ravens be in possession of Stannis' camp? Maybe he took some of those ravens. I thought they just established that they were ravens at Winterfell. So maybe Sam trained some of the ravens that fly back and forth. Sometimes ravens repeat words randomly, but... Mormont's raven talks a lot. Um, it flapped its bleak back wings. <laughs> it flapped its big black cock against the bars of its cage. <laughs> Is that me in this story? <laughs> what? Am I a bird? I have a bird, but I have a massive big black cock. One thing's right. I ain't a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Behind him, the door opened. The car starts had arrived. Bent and twisted, the Castellan of Carhold leaned heavily on his cane as he made his way to the table. Lord Arnoff's cloak was fine gray wool, bordered in black sable and clasped with a silver starred burst. A rich garment, Theon thought, on a poor excuse for a man. He had seen that cloak before. He knew just as he had seen the man who wore it at the Dreadfort, I remember. 
he sat and supped with Lord Ramsay and Horse Bay Number the night they brought Weak Reek up from his cell. The man beside him could only be his son. Fifty, Theon judged, with a soft with a round, soft face like his father. If Lord Arnolf was too fat, behind him were three younger men, the grandsons he survived uh, surmised. Uh, one wore chainmail Bernie, the rest were dressed for breakfast, not for battle. Fools. <laughs> Your grace. Arnolf Karstock bowed his uh, Arnolf Karstock bowed his head. In honor uh, he looked for a seat. For some reason I thought I was live. That would be crazy. Um uh, his stupid son remained oblivious. There are no chairs. Yeah. Where are the chairs? Boom, 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 uh, Excuse me. The, the elf observed. One of the ravens screamed inside its cage. Only mine. King Stan is sat in it. It is no iron throne, but here and now it, it suits. A dozen men had filed through the tower door, led the knight of the moths and the big man in the silver breastplate. You are dead men. Understand that, the king went on. Only the manner of your dying remains to be determined. You would be well advised not to waste my time with her denials. Confess, and you shall have the same swift end as young, that the young wolf gave Lord Rickard lie, and you will burn. Choose. I choose this. One of the grand swords seized his sword hilt and made to draw it. That proved to be a poor choice. The grandson's blade had not even cleared his scabbard before the two before two of the king's knights were on him. It ended up with his forearm flopping in the dirt and the blood spurtering from his stump like some Monty Python. And one of his brothers uh, stumbling for the stairs, clutching a belly wound. He staggered up six steps before he fell and came crashing back down to the floor near Arnoff Carstock. Neither Arnolf Karstark or his son moved. Take them away, the king commanded. The sight of them sours my stomach. Stannis, you just aren't eating, dude. Within moments, the five men had been bound and removed. The one had lost his sword arm. The one who had lost a sword arm had fainted from the loss of blood. But his brother, with the belly wound, screamed loud enough for both of them. That's how I deal with the betrayal. Uh, turn cloak. Stannis informed Theon. My name is Theon. Uh, as you will. Tell me, Theon, how many men did Moore's Umber have with him at Winterfell? None. No men, he grinned, as his own wit. Uh, he grinned at his own wit. He had boys. I saw them, aside from a handful of crippled sergeants. The warriors that Crowfoot had brought down from the last hearth were hardly old enough to shave. I've been shaving since I was like 16, but I didn't have any facial hair back then. So they're younger than that. And you're a grown man at 16 in the woods. The, their spears and axes were older than the hands that clutched them. It was Horsebane Umber who had the men inside the castle. I saw them too. Old men. Every one. Theon tittered. Moors took the green boys and Hawther took the gray beards. All the men went with uh, the great John and died at the Red Wedding. Is that what you wanted to know, Your Grace? King Stannis ignored the jibe. Boys was all he said, disgusted. Boys will not hold Lord Bolton uh, long. Even though I've made pause breaks and cuts in between this video, I actually haven't smoked a cigarette this whole time. And before that, I hadn't smoked a cigarette in two hours. So I'm doing pretty good. Um, the king gave the bird... Uh, uh, king stands to ignore the job. Boys was in the... Uh, not long, Theon agreed. Not long at all. Not long, cried the raven in his cage. Uh... So the raven is clearly being worked by Bran. We just don't know it yet. Um, we'll know in Bran's POV. That happens simultaneously. Uh, and a few POVs after this, hopefully. When the winter comes out. The king gave the bird an irritated look. The Bravosi Banker, the Bravosi banker claimed Sir Aene's phrase dead. Ah, oh, man. It's starting to blur. Starting to blur. So I hate reading stuff off my computer screen. I need to get a uh, reading glass. Did some boy do that? I've been, I know I've been needing to get glasses for years because the lights when I'm driving at nighttime. Not just people with LEDs, but everybody's lights. Blur. It's crazy. And I think that's a specific type of eye problem. A Twenty green boy with spades, the told him. The snow fell heavily for days. So heavily that you could not see the castle walls ten yards away. No more than the men up on the battlements could see 
what was happening beyond those walls. So Crowfood set his boys to the digging pits outside the castle gates, then blew his horn to lure Lord, B- Lord Bolton out. Instead, he got the phrase. The snow had covered up the pits, so they rode uh, right into him. Aenys broke his neck, I heard, but Sir Holstein, uh, Sir Hostein only let lost a horse. Uh, more's the pity. Uh, he will be angry now. Strangely, Stannis smiled. Angry foes. Let me see how much more is left. Okay, cool. Uh. Uh. Strangely, Stannis smiled. Angry foes do not concern me. Anger makes men stupid, and Hostin Frey was stupid to begin with. If half of what I have heard of him is true, let him come. He will. Uh, Bolton has blundered. The king declared all he had to do was sit inside his castle whilst he, we starved. Instead, he has sent some portion of his strength forced to give us battle. His knights will be horsed. Ours must fight afoot. His men will be... N- Nourished ours go into battle with empty bellies. It makes no matter. Sir Stupid, Lord Too Fat, the bastard, let them come. <laughs> uh, we hold the ground, and that I meant to turn to our advantage. The ground, said Theon? What ground? Here, this misbegotten ground, this wretched little village. You have no high ground here, no walls to hide here, no natural defenses. Suddenly, my Theon voice uh, got like I was on, like speeding up the thing. Uh, yet, uh, yet both ravens screeched in unison, then one quirked and the other muttered. That's like the old gods messing with Theon. That's what that is. Tree, tree, tree. The door opened. Beyond the wall was white. The knight of the three moths entered, his legs caked in snow. He stomped his feet to knock it off and said, Your grace, the costoths are taken. A few of them rested, uh, resisted and died for it. Most were too confused and yielded quietly. We have heard of them all into the long haul and confined them there. Uh, well done. They say they did not know the ones we've questioned. Uh, they would. We might question them more sharply. No, I believe them. Karstark could have never hoped to keep his treachery a secret if he shared his plans with every baseborn man jack in his service. Some drunken spearman would have let it slip one night while sliding with the whore. They did not. Sorry for showing y'all that. Scratch my balls on camera. Uh, they did not need to know. Uh, they are. Carhold men, with the moment uh, came in, they would have obeyed their lords as they had done all their lives. As you say, sire, what are your own losses? One of Lord Peasbury's men was killed, and two of mine were wounded. If it please your grace, though, the men were all growing anxious. There are hundreds of them gathered around the tower, wondering what's happening. Talk of treason is on every lip. No one knows who to trust, or uh, who might be arrested next, the Northmen especially. I need to talk with them. Uh, is Wool still waiting? Him and Artos Flint's Flint. Uh, will you see them? Shortly. The Kraken first, as you command. The knight took his leave. Man, my audio voice sucks. Uh, my sister, Theon thought. My sweet sister. Though he had lost all feeling in his arms, he had felt the twisting in his gut the same as when the bloodless Bravosi Branker... The same as when that bloodless Bravosi Branker presented him uh, to Asha as a gift. Uh, the memory still rankled. The burly, balding knight uh, who'd been with her had wasted no time shouting for help. So they had no more than a few moments before Theon was dragged away to face the king. That was long enough. Uh, he had hated the look on Asha's face when she re- realized who he was. The shock in her eyes, the pity in her voice, the way her mouth twisted in disgust. Instead of rushing uh, forward to embrace him, she had taken half a step backwards. She was like, yo, who is this? She goes, Theon? I remember you know, reading that POV. Uh, Didn't, did the bastards do this to you? She had asked. Uh, don't you call him that. Then the words came spilling out of Theon in a rush. He tried to tell her all of it and reek in the dread fort and Kyren the keys, how Lord Ramsay never took anything but skin unless you begged for it. 
Uh, see, that shows you he didn't have his penis and balls taken. Just like with the TV show, took it a step further. He told her how he'd saved the girl leaping from the castle wall into the snow. We flew. Let Abel uh, make a song of that. We flew. Theon sounds like a madman, but all that actually makes sense. Abel is, uh, you know, Mance Raider, pretending to be the bard there to steal the fake Arya. Then he had to say who... Uh, who Abel was and talk about the washerwomen who weren't truly washerwomen, but they're actually, you know, free folk spear wives. By then, Theon knew how strange and incoherent this all sounded, yet somehow the words would not stop. He was cold and sick and tired and so weak, so weak, so very weak. She has to understand. She is my sister. Uh, he never wanted to do any harm to Bran or Rick, and Reek made him kill those boys, not him. Uh, Reek, but the other one. I am no kinslayer, he insisted. He told him how he bedded down with Ramsay's bitches. <laughs> he had sex with the doves. Warned her uh, that Winterfell was full of ghosts. The swords uh, were gone four, I think, or five. So the swords on the tombs of the old, you know, Winterfell, lords of Winterfell's graves. If the swords are removed, their spirits aren't at rest. That's the old rumor of Winterfell. I don't recall the stone kings are angry. He was shaken by then, trembling like an autumn leaf. The heart tree knew my name. The old gods, Theon. That was Bran messing with him. Uh, I heard them whisper, there was no wind, but the leaves were moving. Theon, he said, my name is Theon. It was good to say the name. The more he said it, the less like he was to forget. You have to, you have to know your name, uh, he told his sister. You... You told me you were Eskred, but that was a lie. Your name is Asha. It is. Uh, his sister had said so softly uh, that he was afraid that she might cry. Theon hated that. He hated women weeping. Jane Poole had wept all the way from Winterfell to here wept until her face was purple as a beetroot and the tears had frozen on her cheeks and all because he had told her that she must be Arya or that the wolves might send them back. They had trained you in a brothel, he reminded her, whispering in her ear so that the others could not hear. Uh, Jane is the next thing to a whore. You must go on being Arya. He, he meant no hurt to her. It was for her own good. Uh, and... His, she has to remember her name. When the tip of her nose turned black from false bite, and one of the riders from the Night's Watch told her that she might lose a piece of it, Jane had wept over that as well. Uh, well, at least you're alive. No one will care what Arya looks like so long as she is the heir to Winterfell here. Shorter, a hundred men will want to marry her, a thousand. The memory left Theon writhing in, change, in chain, it's, uh, chains. He just suffered a Meowth payday attack. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon reference. Let me know down in the comments. You got that deep cut? Uh, let me down, he pleaded, just for a little while. Then you can hang me up again. Stannis looked up at him and did not answer. Tree, a raven cried. Tree, tree, tree. The other bird said, Theon clears day as Asha came striding through the door. So yeah, somebody's definitely messing with Theon with those ravens. And I don't remember this part with the... With the Ravens, maybe because I'm reading it out loud, I'm taking more time to process it. But my first reread of that, I totally missed the ravens messing with him. Uh, it's definitely Bran. The other day, or Bella Raven, the other day, uh, then, then other birds said, Theon clears day as Asha came striding through the door. Carl the maid was with her and twisted for Botley. So basically, her bitches. Theon had known Botley since they were boys together back on Pike. Why was. Why was uh, she? Why has she brought her pets? Does this mean to? Cu does she mean to cut me free? They would end the same way as the Karstarks if you tried. The king was displeased by their presence as well. Your guards may wait without. If I, I meant harm to you. Uh, two men would not dissuade me. The Ironborn bowed and retreated. Asha took a knee. Your grace, uh, must my brother be chained like that? It seems a poor reward for bringing you the Stark girl. The king's mouth twitched. You have a bold tongue, my lady, not unlike your turncloak brother. Uh, thank you, your grace. It was not a compliment. Stannis gave Theon a long look. Th the village lacks a dungeon, and I have more prisoners than I am anticipated when we uh, halted here. He waved Asha to her feet. You may rise. She stood. The Bravosi ransomed uh, my seven... Of my men from Lady Glover. I would gladly pay a ransom. Damn, my mouth hurts from doing all this talking out loud. 
uh, well, reading rather, not just talking naturally. There is a, another gold on your iron islands. Your brother's hands are soaked with blood. Faring is urging uh, me to give him to Relore. Clayton Suggs as well, I do not doubt. Him, Corliss Penny, all the rest. Even Sir Richard here, who loves the Lord of Light when it suits his purposes. The Red's God Choir... Red God's choir only knows a single song. So long as the song is pleasing in God's ears, let them sing. Lord, Lord Bolton's men will be here sooner than we would wish. Uh, only Moore's umber stands between us, and your brother tells me he levies. his levies are made up of entirely green boys. Men like to know their God is with them when they go into battle. Not all men worship the same God. Uh, I'm aware of this. I am not the fool my brother was. Theon is my mother's last surviving son. When his brothers died, it shattered her. His death will crush what remains for her. But I have not come to beg you for his life. Wise, I am sorry for your mother, but I do not spare the lives of Turncloaks, this one especially. He slew two sons of Eddard Stark. Every Northman in my service would abandon me if I showed him any clemency. Your brother must die. Uh, then do the deed yourself, your grace. The chill in Osh's voice made Theon shiver in his chains. Take him out across the lake to the islet where the weirwood grows and strike his head off with the sorcerer's, uh, sorcerer's sword you bear. Remember I told you Melisandre glamours his sword to look that way and she's clearly done something to it to make it continue to glamour it that way. I think it's a cool looking sword but I don't think it's the real deal. That is how Eddard Stark would have done it. Theon slew Eddard's sons. Give him to Lord Eddard's gods, the old gods to the north. So good point, Asha. Give him to the tree. And suddenly there was a wild thumping. As the maester's ravens hopped and flapped inside their cages, their black feathers flying as they beat against the bars with loud, rushes claws. The tree one squawked. The tree, the tree is while the second one screamed. Theon, Theon, Theon. Theon, the great joy, smiled. They knew my name, he thought. So what the fuck just happened? A thunderous wild thumping as the maester's ravens hopped. Oh, so Ramsay's men just showed up. Right as Asha was trying to say, Kill Theon with your own hands. Nice try, Asha. I think he's going to get burned. I don't think that's going to work. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this breakdown. Um, uh, please slap a like on it. This was very long, so I don't really know what to say. <laughs> Uh, but I definitely broke it down along the way. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, slap a like. Like goal's going to be 420. I don't know.